Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy from Sickle Bros. I got Quinn here, and we have a very exciting video as we're gonna be doing a tour of the 600 gallon Central American Cichlid Tank. We have a host, Mike, who is the Instagram owner of MBL Aquatics. Uh, we'll leave a link down in the description below, but he's gonna give us a full tour of this tank, the filtration, the stock list, and everything else about it, and we're really excited to show it today. Additionally, one thing that we're really excited about tonight is we are going to be giving Mike one of my juvenile Jack Dempsey's from one of my classroom tanks. Never really had a long-term plan for this, and when Mike reached out that he was looking for a Jack Dempsey, there's no better home than a 600 gallon tank like this. But before we do that, you know the drill. Make sure we hit that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. So here's Mike's 600 gallon Central American Cichlid tank. This is just an incredible tank. We're going to have a conversation with Mike throughout the video about the tank, the stocking, the filtration. He's going to have a feeding frenzy for us later in the video. And then right at the end, we're going to put in Jack Jr. and we're going to show him in his new home. Okay, do you want to tell us just a little bit about the tank maybe? Uh, it is... 96, 46, 32. Uh, Starfire, three quarter inch, roughly 12, 1300 pounds. Is that 600 gallons roughly? Yeah, it's pretty much right on the bottom. Did you support the floor for this weight? Correct. Uh, double the floor joists, and also there's a steel I beam that runs underneath it uh, with the uh, house jacks. Because this tank's in your living room? Living room? Um, and what type of tank is this? Uh, AGE. Okay. Starfire glass. You get this custom made for your yes. spot? Yes. I really like the aquascape you got here, which is some big pieces of driftwood, some rocks, and plants. Try to make it as natural as possible. Um, I use four types of gravel and sand mixed together. Um, to get the consistency I like. You know, I really like that riverbed look, uh, you know, with the larger stones mixed in. Um, I try to keep all the stones relatively the same color. Um, I prefer darker stuff because it actually brings out the colors in the fish. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake using a very light bottom. In my experience, it'll actually wash the fish out um, because they're getting reflection from both sides. Lights penetrating down, reflecting off the bottom, and just washes the fish out. So I think the colors are actually better with a little darker substrate. I think that is proven with the colors on these fish already, at a, and they're yeah, not adults yet. Yeah, yeah, these things are, you know, I got them all roughly about an inch, maybe three, four months ago, three months ago, four months ago. Um, these guys are really young still. Uh, and they grow like weeds. <laughs> and how long have you been in the hobby? Uh, God, I hate to say it, but almost 30 years. And you said you kind of started with salt? Yeah, I, well, I started with fresh at first. Everybody, I think, does. Yeah. And moved to salt water, did that for many years. And then I actually had an online business where I sold equipment and whatnot. And so I was 100% into reef tanks. And then you slowly got back in the Got burnt breath. out, got burnt out, <laughs> like we all do. Um, and had a lot of good friends of mine who were in this hobby. Uh, talked me back into it, and here we are. You know, this tank's made a couple changes already. Uh, the tank before that made a couple changes. You know, I like growing things out, you know, and then once you kind of get tired with it or you know you need a change you can always you have enough friends in the hobby you say hey do you want to come get some fish come get them and we start over with a clean slate put something else in there and this stand is actually very tall how tall is this exactly uh, 44 inches tall and this was custom made yes uh, I made it with a friend of mine I prefer way taller stands a because I'm a little taller but you'll never fit equipment under it Anything 32, 30 and below, good luck. 
you're not gonna find anything. <laughs> yeah, that definitely adds an element to this tank Correct. being so high up to just you don't see the top of the tank and you have a few a, a real view of the tank. You walk straight up to it and it, it's right at eye level. It's awesome. Um, and so just for stocking in here, this is primarily Central American 100%, cichlids? 100% Central American, uh, besides a few of the Placos um, that I had from my previous stock list. In my opinion, I prefer keeping all of one uh, type or try to keep the tank as geologically correct as possible. I just prefer that route. Just to me, it looks way more professional. Um, everything flows. Everything comes from the same regions and waterways and everything else. And it just, to me, I just prefer that route. To have a real biotope? Yes. And also the water is the same, chemistry-wise. A lot of the same parameters are shared yes. in, in diets. Yes. Diets, water parameters, everything. So the future plans for this, it looks like you, you went with around five of each species. Correct. Right? Five, six, seven of each. Um, and I will eventually just cherry pick the ones I want to keep for myself. Maybe pears, I, you know, it just kind of depends. You know, I don't like keeping a lot of pears in a community tank because all you're going to do is, you know, have uh, problems. Get the boxing gloves out, people are going to fight, they're going to fight, and then it's just a nightmare. But yeah, I usually I recommend start with five of each and then you can just weed them out. And you have a lot of friends in the hobby that you're able to yep. trade with. Trade with, sell, give, whatever. So do you want to talk about how you keep this so crystal clear? <laughs> Walk me through your awesome filtration down here. It's a 125 gallon sump. Um, Precision Marine actually made the filter sock. There's three socks, seven inch by 16 inches tall. Okay. The water comes in here, goes through the three socks first, over on top of the floss. I always run floss on top of media and everything, I do. Because it keeps your sump clean. Because it'll all catch the crap there before it finds its way going down the line. Um, I use the biospheres, um, just any kind of media. I don't think there's one better than the other, personally. It all grows bacteria. I mean, just get as much in it as possible. And then over here on the right, you have some, is that pothos? Yes, yes it is. Yep. And that helps remove a lot of the nitrates. Correct. And it's also something else to look at. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. You know, people are kind of amazed about, like, oh wow, you know, you actually have plants in your fish tank. It makes the sump a little more uh, desirable to look at, mm -hmm. I guess. So quite a lot of flow throughout the whole tank. Yes. I cannot stress it enough how much flow is key to any aquarium. I, I don't care what it is. Fresh salt does not matter. And then how often do you do water changes on this tank? Uh, mostly weekly. Uh, I'll do half. So roughly about 300 gallons once a week. If I am really trying to pump them up, you know, I might do a bi-weekly water change if I'm really feeding them, but as they get older, I actually don't feed as much because now they can actually sustain. Um, so I'll usually go back to like a once a week water change.
So after that feeding frenzy, these cichlids were full and just picking around for some of the leftover food, and that's when we put in Jack Jr. If you're new to the channel, Jack Jr. was in Quinn's classroom aquarium. It is actually the offspring of our main Jack in the 110 gallon custom aquarium. His father has a ton of awesome color, and Jack Jr. here already has some great color himself. Quinn's had him for a little over a year, and we're really happy to find such an awesome home for him. Okay guys, that does it for today's video. Thanks again for watching, and make sure you uh, check out Mike's Instagram page. We'll leave that down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. We will likely be back here to show progress on some of these fish as they grow, as they're gonna become really big, and um, it'd be awesome to show the progress. So make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that, and thanks again for watching.